All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, May 4th, 2023 Planning Board meeting. Um, we're, we're, we're live now. Um, so first thing is, is site walk postponed major subdivision Worcester Road R3217-E, R2 zone postponed. Um, there was an issue with um, sending out the letters and um, should we just move it to the next meeting? Uh, not the next meeting. Uh, the next meeting would still be a little too short of time. June. So t if we could move it to June 1st, if that works for you guys. I know Jerry said you're not going to be available that day, but... No, we can move it to Jerry. Okay. Um, so I'll make a motion that we move the um, site walk and public hearing to June 1st. June 1st. I'll second that motion. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. There we go. June 1st. I'll just put that in. All right, and now if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so introduction to board members. On the far left, we have Paul Amatucci, Jerry Graybill, Don Ganarelli and myself, Michael LaRue. Um, there's no public hearings today. Um, we have, we'll open the first public comment for non-agenda items. Um, I just want to reiterate that this also means that it's for people that aren't on the agenda. So there's still, like, there's another thing that's on our agenda, just not on this one today, that when it's in process, we can't speak of them because they're not here to talk about the, like themselves. Um, but for non-agenda items, if you have anything to say, you're more than welcome to come up. Hello, I'm Pat Bovier. I live on Six Country Lane. I was um, just coming to um, see how the proposal for the uh, performance standards for gas stations and convenience stores and that kind of thing were coming. Does the board have any report on that? Um, I have talked to James about that. I mean, would you mind coming up and saying? Yeah, I see. Okay. James Blissmo, town manager. Um, yeah, we Talked with SMPDC a few weeks ago. Um, me, Jay's working on it. SMPDC is, is working on it. So that was, so they have pretty much passed them the baton to develop the ordinances. Passed it to Lee Jay? Yep. Or his office, at least. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then um, are we in any kind of a timeline where we can expect to see some works in progress? Or? I would imagine in the next couple meetings, um, and I can definitely check in and just see what the progress is and have an update for you. Okay, that would be good. Um, yeah, because I was thinking that if, um, if it would be better to put this on the agenda as you know, something to check in each planning board meeting, or I don't know what the best plan is, or just to keep coming in on the public comment yeah just come in on the public comment yep okay good All right, I, think, I think Pat if there's no uh, project that's proposed to come in front of the board it should just be a public comment okay good all okay. right that's good to hear thank you thank, thank you. you Pat uh, Rick Raines 18 Carolyn Drive in Berwick um, first of all, thank you guys for what you do on the planning board. I know it's volunteer. You don't get paid much or anything at all. Um, I do understand the um, recommendation not to talk about projects that are in process. Mm -hmm. um, I would make a recommendation as a procedural note that in order 
and maybe you do this and maybe you don't, but in order for us as a citizen to know what is in process and cannot be discussed during a public comment, um, is that something that can be listed on an agenda so that people know what they can't talk about? Like, we don't necessarily know all the projects that are in process. I know of a couple because I've been to some meetings, but right. but we don't know all the projects that you have going on that are kind of, can only be talked about when they're here. So how do we find out what the projects are if they're not listed anywhere? They, they're on the agenda. The projects that we're talking about mm -hmm. for this meeting are listed on the agenda. Correct. And next to public comments, it says for non-agenda items. Correct. So you can't but, talk about those. But, correct. Anything that we have talked talked about in any previous yes at any, any previous meeting uh, would be covered by no 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 we, Paul we, they cannot speak about any ongoing project no so, will be, yeah. be covered by that exemption that they you would, can't talk about. still on the so yeah. I guess my question on the then is do you want citizens to go back and look through as many previous planning board meetings to find out what the projects are well I mean if you're if I may, Mr. Chair, yeah. I mean, if you're coming in here to speak about a specific project that's been presented before, then you already know that it's been presented and you know it's a basically considered an agenda item. Um, if you're coming in here, like like Mr. Chair said, the beginning, the, the non-agenda items is for town-wide kind of general comments about what you see going on in town, that kind of thing. But to speak to a specific project, you would obviously know that that project exists. You would know that that project exists because it was before the planning board mm -hmm. already, okay. which means you know that that's a considered an agenda item. Okay. So there's no realistic way for us to list all of the ongoing projects that we can't discuss without developers here right. on the agenda because the agenda would be pages long because you're talking even projects going back that were proposed two or three years ago that are being revisited would would have to be listed. Okay. So. But, so when the public hearing that we're going to discuss about the particular subdivision that you're talking about comes back open, it will be on the agenda, correct? Yes. Well, the public hearing is closed now. Oh, I thought it wasn't closed. No, the oh, okay. no they closed, closed the public now. hearing. It was okay. closed the last, the last time. Oh. I thought it was open. No. Okay. Can public hearings be reopened? Yes. Okay. How does a request for that happen? Hannah, do you have the answer to that? If I can find my unmute button, um, I would say it would be at the board's decision to decide to have a second public hearing or additional, in this case, it would be second um, public hearing and you would just make that decision and send out notices for the meeting that it's going to be at um, to reopen it there. there. Okay. So I have multiple questions regarding that project that I will not ask. If you have questions, you can ask, you can give them to Irish. Okay. Right. Am I correct on that? Yeah. And she can. I can facilitate the conversation with yep. the developer. Yep. Outside of a public hearing. Uh, I can send them your questions okay. and they can choose to address them at their next presentation. Okay. And then it'll be up to the board if they decide to open. And it will be up to the developer if he decides to address it. I believe that's the way we handle it. Right, Hannah? Yes. I mean, if, if he chooses to or he or she chooses to address it beforehand um, or in writing or whatnot, if you submitted comments ahead of time. Um, in the public hearing, I would hope that if a question was presented, the developer would address it in some way, shape, or form. Um, but they're referring to they're referring to they're referring to a project where the public hearing's already been closed, but they yes. won't have additional questions. So it's okay for me to still facilitate that, right? Direct it. To yes, we can. Okay. We can receive comments and submit them to the developer. Yes. Thank you. In hopes that they will answer. And if they don't answer, my questions go unanswered because there's no public hearing. Well, I would suggest, yes. as a comment here, 
that when you send those comments in that you also send them to every member of the planning board as well so okay. we see what those questions are fair enough so we could always ask them can do All and, right. and we'll i do. can i can always forward whatever i receive from the public That'd be to great. you sure. guys copy you guys as well as the developer okay. yeah we'll throw a and wide that way net the developer of that way the right. developer knows that the questions were asked and that the board is aware the questions were asked perfect um another procedural question when the board gets reports from agencies on projects, are those reports available to the public to see? Yeah. And how do we go about requesting copies of those reports? I'm sorry, I'm looking at James right behind you. <laughs> so. you well, depending on the thickness of the report, we may have to charge you for making copies, but they're always available in the planning office for you to come sit and review. Okay. And you can bring your cell phone and snippety snap pictures of areas that you want to take a look at engine to. Will do. Um, well, that will um, that'll probably stop me right there, so that we don't get into trouble. Okay. Agreed. Agreed. Thank Appreciate you. that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. What's your last name? Uh, it's Rain. Sorry, why? Uh, Carrie Hilliard, 11 Alley Pond Road. Um, I am requesting that that public hearing be reopened. Um, I don't know if this is a second request since I kind of took his as a request. I actually feel kind of highly offended. Um, I was at the meeting on the 6th of April and um, you know things were discussed after the meeting. I approached one of the board members along with uh, Ms. Karen Mullane, um, questioning the fact that both of us were not going to be able to attend the next meeting. Um, it was told to us that our concerns were heard, heard and that some procedures were going to be followed. I was at work. I was not able to attend that public meeting. Karen was out of town. She was not able to attend that public meeting. I was rather disgusted as to how some of the things were handled. I feel kind of bamboozled that I was lied to and told what was going to happen and that at the next public meeting no decisions were going to be made. Those decisions were made and the public hearing was then closed. Not being able to voice our concerns because we were told that something else was going to happen, which was never followed through. And I would like the public hearing opened again because I feel like we were never able to be completely heard on our concerns. And as a citizen and as a taxpayer, I believe that is your responsibility to listen to us and to hear our concerns and for us not to be directly lied to as to what was going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll reply to that. Um, I did talk with you that night and I did talk with James after that and then I also remember saying that the public hearing was going to be closed the next no. meeting so that's the way I remember it that was not what happened. That's well we can vote on that but yeah. um, is there any other public comment no all right Moving on is approval of minutes for April 20th, 2023. I make a motion we approve the minutes as written. I'll second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? All right, no old business today, so moving on to new business, site plan amendment, 106 Route 236, R5732, RCI Zone, Berwick, Iron and Metal. I'm assuming I can do a presentation, correct? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, my name is Jay Stevens. I'm a civil consultant, and I've been working on the projects at the Berwick Iron and Metal Facility. You know, the, um, recycling down here on Route 236, right next to the uh, town uh, okay. uh, waste the transfer, the transfer station. station. Right. <laughs> we can transfer different stuff. Um, and I'm here with uh, Mr. Brenna, who's the owner of Berwick Iron and Metal. And basically, as for those of you who are, may or may not be familiar with it, the, uh, the entrance is off Route 236. You come in, and it's basically a metal recycling. There's a scale right off the edge of the side of the roadway. They come in, they weigh the material going in. It's then put into different piles to be recycled as aluminum or copper or whatever it happens to be. And then they come back out and off they go. The shredder that everyone's familiar with is sitting back in here. And when it was originally put in, everyone was worried it was going to run almost 24 hours a day. At least that was the impression that everybody had. And it probably did run five days a week for quite a while because at that point there was a pretty good backlog of material that needed to be consolidated and removed. Um, that was many years ago. The project started in 2005. Um, and I think it must have been 2000. 13, everything that was really going Yeah, we started that. We, we, got, I mean, we won in the Supreme Court, I think, in 2012. Right. So 2013 is when the shredder actually went in. And actually, since that date, we haven't had any complaints, or at least there's none that I'm aware of that the town's ever had on file for any violations of anything. The uh, state comes in there through the solid waste offices, and they check it multiple times a year. Um, we have all kinds of annual reports to different things. Um, everything's going along great uh, to the extent that they have to keep records for incredible lengths of time to verify all the stuff that's been going on. And right now everything is done in a little baby building right here. Or specifically little bitty building right next to the scale house. There are two young ladies that work there, um, manning the scales, answering the phones, taking care of the management of uh, paperwork, and... Can we use a podium? I can't hear him. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> So what we would like to do, or what the management would like to do, is they'd like to replace this small building that's sm smaller than about half of this room with a building that makes sense. And also they'd like to put in a restroom into that building so the people who work there don't have to go out in the middle of the winter, cross the active driveway to the scale, to get into the facilities that are currently in this second building. So the whole effort of this project is to replace this little bitty tiny building with a slightly bigger building. The same width as the original footprint, lined up, centered on the scale, and then big enough to hold all kinds of records. Um, we provided in your packets um, some sketches that the uh, I want to put together for a two-story building that would include on the first floor all of the, uh, the lobby entrance where people come in, they you know take care of the records for you know what's being dropped off, what's being swapped out, creating an area for the permanent record storage, and then just space for those types of activities that occur in there when the personnel come in and they have to have safety briefings and things like that. And then moving the current office space to the second floor where they would have the offices for the president of the company, the business management, and so forth. Um, and literally that's all they're doing is replacing that building and adding a restroom at that location. Now what we did do is 
the existing facility uh, has a septic field out behind it, and we got a hold of the people who did the original design for the septic many, many years ago. They came out, reevaluated everything, um, and based on the number of personnel that have worked there over the years, nothing has to be done to change the septic field. All we're doing is adding a new source for the material coming into the septic tank. And so in this new scheme, there will be a little pump station outside this new building and literally everything will be pumped out to the septic field that's currently out there in service. Uh, the current field is probably three times as big as it needs to be for the current load, the current uh, staffing, and so forth. So literally there's, there's no change to anything else. And the only thing they're doing is replacing this small, outdated building with a larger, more reasonable structure with a little restroom inside. That's what the whole project is. Um, like I say, we've got the uh, HHE 200 redone, recertified, and a letter from the designer saying that everything is fine. Um, I'm doing the work on the pump station as, you know, as a licensed engineer in the state of Maine to get it from the new building out to where it will tie into that septic field. Um, and we're actually doing it a little extra. We're putting in a septic tank at this building, uh, at the new building, so it's strictly effluent that's going out to the field. None, none of the solids and everything will be treated like a regular septic tank back at the new building. You won't really be able to see the building because you can't see the building from the road now. If you go out there and the actual gate is open, and the gate is, is out here, if that gate is actually open, and you sit just correctly, you might be able to see through and see the building. But if you hit it just right, by the time you look, you're already past it and you can't see it. Um, all Everything from this area is all obstructed by the uh, precast concrete operation that's sitting out here in the, in the front, so you can't see the building. Um, the area where the building is going was all blasted ledge. It was blasted for the original building. It's the same ledge that was out there before. There's no change in stormwater. Nothing's changing in where the water's going. Everything literally is the same as it was. Uh, we feel that's a minor change, or about as minor as you can do. Uh, we're, we're, again, we're not increasing the number of people at the facility. Uh, we're not changing the operations. We're just making it more reasonable for the administrative side to keep up with the paperwork and take care of the people that are in that building. And I think that covers everything. Yeah, we're, we're, so yeah we're excuse me. If you're going to talk, you got to come up and okay. speak in the mic. The people at home can't yeah, hear so you. Yeah, so we'd also need a demolition permit because what we'd want to do is we'll put an office trailer on the other side of the scale, demo the building that's there, and build it right in the exact same location. So that's how we'd like to do it if we could. And is there any additional blasting needed nope. for the ledge? Nope. Okay. When we did it, it, because the building that's there has a four-foot frost wall, mm -hmm. and it's the whole thing's blasted all the way the whole entire yard. Okay. When we did it originally, you know, those ledge outcrops everywhere, so we had to blast the whole thing. Okay. So you can dig it down anywhere you want. And this, the purpose of this building is purely administrative. There is no operational. Uh, activities going on there, nope. meaning with the scrap metal and uh, no, no, it's a strictly an office building. That's it. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank yeah. you. What will occur is they do have to do required training on the spill control training, like most companies do. This will actually give them a spot that isn't in the middle of another operation where they can do that. Type of thing. Okay. So it just makes it operationally better all the way around. And that's literally all it's in the office, tearing down one building and putting the new one back over the top of it. Iris, do you have anything? No, nope. we're just looking to see, uh, to find the application complete today. Mm -hmm. um, I have 
zero concerns about what he's requested. I've okay. spoken with him at length previously about you know, the application process and such. So, based based on that, I would make a motion that we find the application complete. Second. Okay. Further discussion? No. All in favor? What, what we would obviously like to do is, after you find it complete, is to say it's okay to now get a permit because part of what we've done uh, for the sewer side of it is that's a long haul. Because of the ledge, we haven't peeled it off yet. If it has to be shallow, we have to order an insulated pipe, and that's actually has a pretty good lead time on it. So we don't dare order it until we know we've got a approval to actually do the work um, so we're I don't know that we can approve it all in one because we do need to set schedule a site walk and um, public hearing public hearing so um, I don't know that we can grant that Hannah we can't, we can't. Um, I, I would say that the board should still have a public hearing um, the ordinance does not require a site walk for uh, site plans. Um, so it's kind of up to the board's discretion as to whether or not they wish to hold one for this type of application. Um, but even so, I would suggest still discussing holding a public hearing um, and the approval if nothing changes at the next the next meeting. Okay. Okay. So no, you don't think so? No. no? I mean, it's just a small update to a building. Yeah, I, I don't see a need no for sidewalk. Long. Okay. No. Um, as a public hearing, I think we should still have it yeah, just to yeah. voice any public concerns if there is any. So, um, um, for that, um, well, Mr. Chair, yeah. James and I are both working tomorrow so we can get a butter's notices out as soon as needed. So, that could also be for June 1st. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So June first, and then we would just have to set the first one for four o'clock, and then this one for five. Okay. So four, four o'clock. Uh, but you're not doing a site walk. No, we're not doing a site. No, one. sorry. Just yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, so now you've done messed me up. First one at, still at five well, then. Yeah, still at five. Okay. Well, subject to change depending on the rest of the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so so basically, uh, for my for my notes purposes, no site walk, public hearing June first, and um, at that point, then we could potentially give them the okay to get their yes. permits. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's it. Thank you very much. Yep. You're welcome. All right, next to new business is site plan review, stormwater, road improvements, and public recreational area, Sawmill Hill and Moulton Street, U174R1 and RP Zone, Town of Berwick. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Hi, good evening. I am uh, Mike Zarba. We are representing uh, SLR International Corporation and uh, on behalf of the town of Berwick. Um, maybe you've all had a chance to look at the plans, maybe not. We can, uh, we can go through basically the, uh, the concept, but uh, if you're familiar certainly with the Moulton Street area and this particular parcel, the town acquired it some years back and has been looking to redevelop it. Um, well, I shouldn't say redevelop, really, to establish a recreational um, passive recreational activity uh, parcel there and along with that activity they're they're looking to redo Moulton Street and uh, parts of first and second uh, heading up the hill and I believe Copeland um, uh, up at the end um, all of that water drains currently um, to an existing 18 inch outfall pipe that exists on this particular parcel um, that we're talking about and as part of the improvements of Moulton Street um, the town asked obviously that we improve the outfall structure itself which is an MS4 structure uh, outfall number 007 of course um, hence the title of the, of the project um, 
but do it in compliance with with the vision of having a park like recreational activity again passive recreational activity out there um, throughout the year so we've designed some stormwater features uh, for the site that uh, hopefully comply with that have allowed some um, you know pathways to to eventually be installed um, to access the river area um, and other parts of the site that were that we're not really involved in it at this particular point but um, I think um, there's a master plan for that site uh, overall as to how the green spaces and the pathways and, and a variety of other um, you know the passive recreational activities might occur on there so um, we've tried to do you know like I said the plan in compliance with that uh, you know forethought um, you know so the town can yeah eventually like I said get the rest of the landscaping and features that they that they need and want for the public's use of that site give you a concept on sheet number 12 we kind of have a um, blow up portion of the the end point so same as all rivers is right down the bottom of the hill here um, right at the at the sharp curve um, we have the, what it was outfall 007 and, and the improvements are kind of uh, shown on the different you know some of these graphics the layout plan in, in general um, I believe we have a grading plan <laughs> shows a little bit more of the uh, site grading activities um, the stormwater basin itself is a, um, a little bit more uh, complex than just a standard um, detention basin it, it uh, what you're seeing uh, down here are um, what, what are called R tanks which are um, underground storage tanks but the underground storage tanks in this case um, allow the water to um, infiltrate uh, through a sand filter system that's underneath those uh, for treatment purposes um, and really we're treating for uh, water quality activities that are required so that when we discharge eventually the water back to Salmon Falls River um, it's been cleaned effectively from the pollutants sediments oils grease phosphorus nitrogen type activities that generally are picked up in stormwater flowing down roads um, and so this is like I said a little bit more specialized um, type pond to address those issues for the uh, you know DEP requirements um, and for your MS4 requirements as well uh, so that you're discharging clean stormwater back to uh, you know back to the river so is, um, is that what's going in the thousand gallon tank that's proposed on here the thousand gallon tank yes the thousand gallon tank is actually a um, it's a pre-treatment sediment okay. facility that's that's so what we try to do is get as much of the sediments the larger sediments out first okay. um, and through that tank system that's where those would actually settle out the water then would go through the the piping system here into these storage tanks filter through that sand uh, filter system and then eventually get discharged out to this outfall structure over here um, is, is what's being shown um, so yeah typically you want to get as much of that um, bigger like I said larger gritty type sediment out so it doesn't clog the sand filters or the or the storage tanks themselves awesome. thank you and I believe we also have the two landscaping sheets uh, on there are showing what um, the roadside landscaping would be uh, on sheet number one. Uh, this is Mulch Street and the added parking area and the sidewalk um, that's being added to that area of the street from Solomon Road to the corner. Um, and then it, the second sheet is really the, the landscaping that's shown around the whole detention pond to uh, again screen uh, a good majority of it from you know the passerbys or the walkers that might be out in this site eventually. Um, you know it's kind of supposed to kind of hide you know a good majority of, of that although the slopes you know are you, you can see are you know fairly steep at some points but um, we think you know certainly with landscaping and once uh, 
you know, that matures, that, you know, will be screened nicely, um, you know, as a passive recreation area. Well, should someone see that, would that be yeah. offensive uh, in some way, uh, the quality of the water that's sitting in that pond? Um, no, I don't believe I Actually, there won't be standing water in the pond itself, other than okay. during an actual rainstorm. Okay. There, there will be storage in the pond, but it will drain um, within 48 hours. Um, so you won't see standing water in there, but... Um, yeah, they're just not necessarily the most sightly uh, when yeah. you see this this kind of hole in the ground. So yeah. I think to the degree we can try to screen it from that and make it more okay, so of a, be a landscaped the empty look, uh, you know, more like a parklet, uh, you know, would look as opposed to a um, an industrial, let's call it, you know, water treatment, uh, stormwater treatment facility. Is there a useful life of the uh, the sand filter system? Um, they, as long as they're in properly maintained, and, and part of the requirement of putting in a system like this is it's going to need to be, you know, maintained within the manufacturer's recommendations. Uh, there's a procedure for that. It's it's all listed on here, um, and in and in the plan sheet. So the town's going to obviously have to take on, you know, that maintenance responsibility. Okay. Um, you know, in the future, typically it's back flushing, it's inspecting it, you know, annually or after, you know, maybe particular types of of storms or heavy storm events. Um, making sure that the pretreatment uh, tank that you that you asked about, you know, is is pumped, you know, when it's supposed to be, so that we don't allow those sediments to get into the, you know, into the system. Um, so other than that, um, you know, they're they're actually plastic. Believe it or not, plastic creates high density polyethylene crates. So effectively, the crates should last as long as you maintain it properly. They should last that long, um, and the sand filter itself should. The same way, as long as it's maintained properly and can be, it, like I said, it can be backflushed, so it, it shouldn't degrade. It's very much like a septic system. I mean, it, right. it eventually might fail, um, so I would expect its life expectancy is, you know, the same 40, 50, 60 years, but it largely depends on proper maintenance as well. Thank you. Question You said the slope of this. This quite steep. Would yes, be a hazard to kids playing in the area or anything like that. I think with the landscaping that's shown around there, that's not really a place that they should be accessing um, very easily. I think you best see it on on here. Right. We had to do some kind of. Intricate grading to make sure that we had enough depth for these. So we just talked about the sand filter and the and the crates that sit inside there to store water. Those take up a certain amount of depth that we have you know have to go down and to create enough elevation for us to get a discharge point on the existing site. Um, we can't. You know, part of this whole thing is we really can't be discharging this directly at the river's edge, um, which are where the grades would have gone to. Um, had we done that. So we built up the uh, stormwater pond a little bit uh, from what it was, and that's why you see the steep grade coming down. But what we really steepened the grade up for was to avoid impacting the 75-foot um, protection zone from the river. And really there's a, in addition to the 75-foot setback, it's from the top of a slope of less than 20%. And unfortunately, we had some 20% slopes adjacent to the river right there and so we had to you know squeeze this up as high on the hillside as we could and it you know required us to to kind of steepen up this embankment a little bit from what what exists there now but um, I wouldn't expect that that's not the location where people are going to be um, playing around on uh, again the landscaping is gonna is gonna prevent a lot of that from from being the occurrence as well how deep is it how deep is How the pond deep? itself? Yes. Because a, a steep angle that only goes three feet versus a steep angle that goes 30 feet is two very, very different concepts. Two plus feet? The, the, it's not, so the, the, the top of the berm is at 179. The bottom of the 
basin itself is at 176.85. Oh, so it's so steep, it's, but yeah, it's, it's only a couple of feet. It's the embankment. It's, it's the downhill embankment from there that's steep. Oh, okay. I know you probably can't see it over there. I'm sorry. That's okay. I didn't bring up my copy of materials over. So. It's this downhill slope here that we have basically a three to one slope joined back to grade before we hit that 75 foot um, setback line. So we needed to match into existing grades uh, from, from the top of the line here, which this, this line here is represented. Now that shouldn't be a problem, right? No. I just don't know. Right, yeah. right. Thank you for that. Sure. Blind. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Right, right. So j just saying the obvious question here, uh, you don't see a need to fence this? The entire basin itself? Yes. I do not, no. Okay. No. No, it should be draining pretty quick. And if, if needed, I would assume we can always petition the town manager to add a fence at the uh, edge of the stream if needed. <laughs> so do you guys have any other questions because we're we're looking for completeness on this application too yeah but so. we have to discuss the waivers first yeah so um the first waiver is 9.8.f.1.e <laughs> external plumbing permit or permission letter to enter municipal water and sewer lines or on-site soil investigation report by licensed site evaluator. The second one is 9.8.f.2.b.i, or one perimeter survey of parcel be certified by land surveyor. And then the third one is 9.8. 8.f.2.b.4 IV on site soils investigation. So, Hannah, would you mind giving a brief uh, description of these? Yes, um, I'm pulling up my report now, but um, the and I'm not going to read them because I don't remember the numbers that you just gave, but the first and the last waiver that you just mentioned are essentially of the same item. Um, the first one is it listed in the conditional use section of the ordinance, and the second one is it listed in the site plan section of the ordinance, um, and the site plan section of the ordinance requires all of those submission requirements plus the conditional use ones, so it's, it's double dipping there. Um, so if you would vote to waive it. You'd be waiving both, although they are the same um, item technically, pretty much. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Um, and that one is is really if you're going to be connecting to public sewer for a bathroom, uh, which is not what they're doing here. So that's the ask for the waiver there. They didn't do the study because there is no bathroom to connect to. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And then... I don't recall what the other one was. The perimeter survey of parcel by certified land surveyor. Yes, that one. Um, I actually wanted to ask the applicant why that was not included, um, and if there's reasoning for that waiver. Sure, I'd be. We so we had the property surveyed by Owen Haskell, but substantially, it's a linear roadway project that we had Owen Haskell perform a topography survey um, you know for the entirety of Moulton Street like I said all the way up the hill to Copeland they also surveyed a portion of this lot that we're talking about tonight but one it extends well beyond the area that we needed surveyed and the town owned the parcel so we didn't see frankly the need in, to do the design that we were talking about doing we didn't need to do that um, and of course, I think we were trying to keep costs down for the town to not do a perimeter, perimeter survey that, that didn't need to be done. We, I'll gather that the town has that perimeter survey, um, 
probably from purchasing the lot. I, I, I can't speak to that. I don't know we ever necessarily investigated that, but, um, you know, we didn't need it for the purposes of this particular project. Um, you know, there's no structures, facilities, or anything else going on the site that would need, say, setback requirements or anything like that. So I think identifying those specifically uh, for our purposes wasn't, you know, uh, the, the exact scope of our project. Makes sense to me. So looks like in my memo, I recommended the two um, soils report related memos and just completely didn't mention the other one. Um, but based on that explanation, I would also recommend the, the waiver for that one as well, the land survey. All right, thank you. I would make a motion that we uh, approve all three waivers on this as applied for. I'll second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Next is completeness. any uh, uh, state or environmental issues that have not been addressed that need to be addressed here or are we fine with all those approvals I is that my question Irish oh I was gonna say I think I think we're good do you see anything that was missing Hannah um, as far as what has been submitted, I did not see anything missing. Um, I did know in the memo that uh, we have sent the plans uh, to Christy Rabaska, who I'm assuming the board is rather familiar with, uh, yep. to review since it is an MS4 project. Uh, she's reviewing that for MS4 permit compliance and doing the technical review there. Um, so if there's anything that comes up with that, obviously that'll be submitted to the board. But as far as application submitting, submittals, uh, there wasn't anything missing there. Thank you. Okay. I'll make a motion that we find this applicant complete. I'll the motion. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Um, next would be scheduling the site walk and public hearing. Um, seeing how there was not a site walk for the last one, would we want to do that for the June 1st? Oh, okay. You're talking about Worcester Road. This one? No, that one got postponed. We're doing that one, but the um, oh, the, the metals. No, we're, we're, we're not doing general. a site walk yeah. on that. So, would we do the site walk on June first? Is that going to be enough time? Yeah, we. I think we can push both of those. Doesn't matter if you can do four o'clock and five o'clock for two yeah. site walks. Can you do right. four and five? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we'll have to do. Is move the the. Uh, do you want to do? The scrap metal at four. I uh, mean, you mean Worcester Road? Yeah, Worcester Road. Worcester Road yeah, at four. Sorry, it's just confusing. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we'll Worcester do Worcester Road at four, and, and then, then we'll do the park at five. Yep. On June first. No, that's coming up next. Oh, that's nice. Yep. Puts us closer to here and Dunkin' Donuts before the meeting. Okay. Um. Now that would make what? three public hearings for that day? Is that going to be too much, or are we going to try and schedule that one the next meeting? What's the uh, third that you have for that day? We'll the have... The first one is Worcester Road. The second one is the... Berwick Iron the, and Metal. The, yeah, Berwick Iron and Metal. Yeah, and then this, this one would be the third one. Um, I mean, I think, I think you probably could push this one to the 15th. Okay, for the and just space it all a bit. Okay, that'll work. Okay, yeah, let's do the public hearing on the fifteenth for that. Even, even just do the site walk on the fifteenth. Yeah, that that'll probably be fresher in our minds. Then. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Just just so you don't have to do 
Two. Two sight walks. Okay. Kind of cramming it in. Yeah. yeah. Sight walk at four or five? Five o'clock? Five o'clock. All right. Really so are we moving Worcester Road back to five? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to need another page to write changes of times. <laughs> yep. Or just a whiteboard. Yeah. So you can just, just keep. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Next mm -hmm. is new business solar extension request off Hubbard Road, R1 7 4 AP okay. zone soltage. Hi, um, I'm Olivia Crosby with WSP. I'm here for, um, on behalf of Soltage, uh, Drew and Alex could not attend, so um, I'm here to present for them. Um, we are requesting a permit extension for the solar project um, on Hubbard Road for an additional year um, until the interconnection issues are resolved. I'm sure you're aware the CMP um, is still working through all their interconnection um, issues. So when hopefully, you know, that'll be resolved shortly and we can continue on. Um, the project has already been permitted and approved through the planning board and has all, you know, required approvals. So this is just an extension request um, for the permit approval. I'll make a motion that we uh, extend the uh, permit for another year. I'll second. Okay, further discussion? No, all in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next into new business, subdivision amendment, lot line adjustment, 15 and 17 Winding Brook Drive, R49, 11-3, and R49, 11-4, R2 zone, Fitchett. How are you doing? Nice, Philip Fitchett. Um, we're, we're, we're looking at adjusting our property lines. Um, our neighbors is currently in the process of selling our house. Um, I know it pushes us under the 150 foot road frontage that, that they say is required, but we are sitting on the end of a dead end cul-de-sac. Like there's there's nothing you can do back there. Like there's no way to cut another road and there's, there's nothing there. And if you look at the lots, like the reason, initially there was gonna be another house back there. So our lot is a little bit bigger. So when you see that weird corner that kind of juts into the side of our yard, there was going to be an easement and a right of way to put our house further back and it failed the perk test back there. So it's, it's a non-buildable lot anyway. Um, so what we're looking at doing is knocking off that corner. You know, part of our front yard is actually in her front yard, which is almost pointless. And then that corner that, that juts out into the side of our yard is literally 15 to 20 feet off of our septic system and our leach field. So if we could make these adjustments, then it allows us really to open up and clean that up on the side and, and get those trees and all those roots and all that crazy stuff that's really encroaching on our leach fields and, and open up the side lines of the yard and the side lines, giving her back the front yard, you know. So what, what is the final uh, frontage? Then after this, we would end up, I think, at 112.19 yeah. 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 versus 150. And okay. when they when they did the development, the neighbor to the left of us, if you look at his lot, his lot is sitting at around 55 to 60 feet. Um, there is an easement there that goes; it's public access to a little pond that's there. But I want to say his road front is only like 60 feet. You know, I mean, I understand the 150 foot on a main road, but back there, I mean, you you know, there's nowhere else to go. You know, you're gonna stop when you hit the house, so. You know, you can't cut another road in, you know, even if you wanted to, realistically. Iris, you have anything? Um, I do. I actually, uh, the neighbor who owns the parcel who, that has the little jet into their yard was not able to attend, so she sent me an email. Um, she said, good evening, Miss Griffith. Christine and Boo Fitchett gave me your email address and asked me to write a letter in regards to new property lines that separate my property from theirs. I am completely in agreement with the Fitchetts when it comes to rezoning the lines for our properties. We have been wanting to do this for some time now. We are hoping to have it approved before I sign the house over to the new buyers. And then she says, if we need anything else from her to let her know. And that is from Bernice Condon slash Whirling. The, the house is currently under contract. Um, and we were trying to kind of get it all done before that, just, you know, because it starts the process all over again. Um, Square footage for square footage, you know, we, we're not looking at taking any of the yard, you know, because then it pushes, you know, her yard under square, you know, the minimum square footage for the area. Um, 
it does affect the road frontage, but again, road frontage on the end of a dead end road, you know, and, and allowing us to really clean up and get the trees away from our leach field and everything else is just beneficial all the way around, really. Okay, Hannah, do you have anything else to add? Um, the only thing that I will add is that um, the our, our applicant is correct that the required frontage is 150 feet, and the ordinance actually permits their frontage to be reduced by 20 percent to 120 feet uh, because of its location on the cul-de-sac. Um, so their their request for the 112 is even less um, of a what's the word? Less action right. than it seems. Yeah. 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 Um, than, than it seems, yeah. But other than that, uh, it seems very minor and makes great sense to me. I don't I don't know why it was drawn like that to begin with. It, but. it was because the other lot, if you stood in the yard, you would look at it and go, what are you doing? Like, our, you know, our lawn chair would be in her front yard and she'd be sitting in our backyard. It's just, so if we can switch those corners and adjust the triangles, it opens up their backyard a little bit and opens up the side of ours. That's all it does. Allows you to clean the corners up and straighten the lines up. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we approve the waiver. I'll second that motion. Okay. For the discussion. All in favor? Right. Thank you. Who seconded that? Uh, Don did. Don. Don did. Malfi. Whispered. And Hannah, we don't need to do a uh, public hearing for this because it doesn't impact any other properties, right? If the board really wanted to, they could, but they do not have to. Mm. Yeah. No. Oh, so one and done permanently. The fidgets are good. I think they're just, they're good now, right? There's nothing else that we need to do for voting. You need to approve the amendment. Okay. <laughs> there we but go. Other than that, that's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was, minor detail. No, we just no, we have, just we granted the waiver. Okay. Now it's. I move that we approve the amendment. Okay. I'll second. Okay. For the discussion. All in favor. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Moving along. Public comment for non-agenda items. Second one. Hello, Karen Mullane, forty-seven Alley Pond Road. Um, just procedural question regarding public comment, public hearing, when you can speak about agenda, non-agenda items. Um, I understand that some topics are off limits because they are in process. If they were on the agenda today, they would still be off limits because there's not a public hearing. If I have a concern, um, I streamed the last meeting, I could not attend and I have a, a serious concern about some misinformation, when or how do I address that? Um, James, could you answer that? I think one of the best things to do is you can email Irish, myself, and Hannah, and we can okay. track down. I'm happy to talk with your concerns and procedures. Okay, so via email is probably the best way? Yes. Okay, and yeah. if a public hearing were to be reopened? So procedurally, um, with the final, when the final plan comes in, they, the board can decide to hold a public hearing on the final plan. So when that comes in, which I believe will be in the next meeting or two, okay. they submitted their final plan, so they can decide to hold a final plan public hearing. That would be wonderful. So, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Do you have any opposition? No. Okay. All right, next, moving along, is informational items. Hannah, they always look at me. Um, <laughs> so, so, um, James, why'd you put TBD on these? Am I supposed to bring them up to them? No, no, no. Okay. No. 
So do we have anything informational? No. no. I would just make a reminder of the meeting with North Berwick next week. Yes. Oh, yeah. Don't forget, we need to make a quorum at North Berwick. What day? The when Wednesday? The 11th. I don't know if that's Wednesday or Thursday, but it's the 11th. That's, that's Thursday. Thursday. Is it yeah, Thursday? send an email. No, that's June. I believe it's Thursday. It is Thursday. 11th, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. Yep. Time? I think they start at 7? 6.30. 6.30? Yeah. I haven't been to one of their meetings in a while. 6.30. Okay. And Lee will be there um, for from our office for that project. Mike, I have a question. Okay. I have a question question from last night. I know we can't talk about what went on, but I have a question about the people who were in Berwick. They did not show up to that meeting last night. They were uh, the they were only... There. But what I'm saying is they're allowing them to express their concerns was not they did not do it at south berwick i'm just wondering since they're all from berwick a butters notices were sent for the site walk and um uh, and the meeting right they were there at the site walk but they did not come in then that was a, a choice they made because there was no comments sent to me or i would have gone to the meeting um so they yeah no, the but the only um, abutters to the other town projects that we have going right now are just um, literally on that street, except for one across the street that followed in the right within the footage. So I guess the question I have is, since that park portion is in Berwick, everything still happens for our projects. Procedurally speaking, for our projects with with south berwick those all happen in south berwick for our so projects in north berwick they're all going to happen in north berwick so all of our discussions have to be at the south berwick meetings where i'm going yes no yes words. all of our discussions for the south berwick, okay. berwick well, projects would be there we can request them to come in for a meeting i was mistaken about that what we can request is for us to have an extra meeting there or bring an extra meeting have them bring an extra meeting or have them come to a meeting that they have scheduled that okay. we can attend that might be sooner than what they originally anticipated. Okay. Um, yeah. any, that was any my, meetings, my bad. <laughs> yeah, any meetings revolve, or involving a project that crosses town boundaries uh, have to be joint meetings between the two boards. And since the uh, active application is with South Berwick, um, they really should be held by South Berwick. And same when we switch to North Berwick. Because that's going to be submitted as one project, not two separate, right? Okay. Correct. Yeah. And the, the primary portion of the property is in North Berwick, so the active application will be there. So, ladies and gentlemen, more road trips. Mm -hmm. I'm the lady, you guys are the gentlemen, but more road trips. So, we'll <laughs> be voting in South Berwick at that time when the time comes. Yes. And okay. then for the other one, we'll be in North Berwick. Yes. One. So, okay. it's very important I guess that's my only informational item is it's very important when we have these out-of-town meetings I'll send the reminders if you guys can let me know for sure who who's gonna be there because if we can't make a quorum I have to see if we can have something pushed mm -hmm. so the 11th I'll be there okay I'm holding you to it All right, you do <laughs> I know where you live I know you do I've met your wife I'll ever drag you <laughs> he doesn't butch <laughs> <laughs> all right Next is the adjournment. I move that we adjourn the meeting of the planning board May 4th, 2023. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Good night. Good night, sir. You should have said May the 4th.